in this day and in this age in which we are living right now, there is so much angelic activity, but there's also demonic activity. And for example, a friend of mine, she was leading a prayer meeting two nights ago, and she told me all of a sudden in the middle of the prayer meeting that the atmosphere changed. And she said it was as if there was something dark and heavy that came into the prayer meeting. It was an online prayer meeting. And as it came into the prayer meeting, she said all of a sudden, you know, just the peace disappeared and there was unrest and confusion in the prayer meeting. She knew what to do in order to restore the spiritual atmosphere. And that is what we're going to talk about today in this week's weekly word of prophetic encouragement. One of the things that we can say is that it is time to be encouraged. Why? Because God is on the move, and that means also that the enemy is on the move trying to discourage and delay and derail the plans of God, but the Lord has got something for you to make sure that doesn't happen. My name is Arlene Westerhoff, and welcome to my weekly word of prophetic encouragement. Today's weekly word of prophetic encouragement is a word that is meant to help you stand as you do spiritual warfare for the things that God has entrusted to you and also for breakthrough for your future. Now, today we're talking about angelic activity, demonic activity, but especially the role of angelic and demonic watchers. Now, the Bible talks about these things, and a watcher is someone who observes, a watcher is someone who stands and looks so that they can report it to another. A watcher is also in the spiritual realm, someone who is, you are able to discern their presence. And so we need to be able to develop our discernment to be able to tell what is an angelic watcher, what is a demonic watcher. In Daniel chapter 4, verses 13 and 14, we find a key scripture about angelic watchers. It says here, then as I lay there dreaming, and Daniel is writing here, I saw a watcher, a messenger, a holy one coming down from heaven. And the messenger shouted, cut down the tree and lop off its branches, shake off its leaves and scatter its fruit, chase the wild animals from its shade and the birds from its branches. Now, Daniel saw indeed in a dream, an angelic watcher that was sent from God. And what was that watcher, that messenger angel uh, decreeing? He was making a decree about what would happen with King Nebuchadnezzar. That angelic watcher had been dispatched from heaven to watch and keep an eye on Nebuchadnezzar. Why? Because Nebuchadnezzar was a powerful king, but he was also a prideful king. And so God's eye was on him through this angelic watcher. And we all know the story because of the decree of the watcher, King Nebuchadnezzar, he spent the next number of years in the fields like a wild animal. And so this was an angelic watcher. And the Hebrew word for an angelic watcher, especially in this text, is I-Y-R, or ear. And that means a watcher angel. Now, Satan is not original. And if there are watcher angels, then you can bet there are going to be watcher demons also. And in Acts chapter 16, we find an example of a demonic watcher. I'm going to read Acts chapter 16, verse 16 to 19. One day, writes Paul, as we were going down to the place of prayer, that's Paul and Silas, we met a slave girl who had a spirit that enabled her to tell the future. And this slave girl earned a lot of money for her masters by telling fortunes. And she followed Paul and the rest of us shouting, these men are servants of the most high God and they have come to tell you 
how to be saved. This went on day after day until Paul got so exasperated, essentially, that he turned to the woman and he said to the demon in her, I command you in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. And instantly it left her. Now, obviously, this was a demon, a spirit of divination that this woman had. But this was also a demonic watcher. Why do we know that? It's because it says in this text that she followed Paul and Silas day after day, shouting, you know, to anyone who would listen, these men are servants of the Most High God, and they have come you to tell you how to be saved. Now, that's interesting because we know that demons are liars, just like their master, the devil. And so on the one hand, you could say this woman was telling the truth. But if you go back to the original text, the original text in Greek and Aramaic, what you see is that this woman actually said the following. These men are servants of the Most High, and they have come to tell you a way to be saved, not the way to be saved, but a way to be saved. And we know that that is a lie. Why? Because there's only one way to be saved, and that is through Jesus Christ. And so this was a demonic watcher, and Paul and Silas knew it. And finally, Paul turned around and cast the demon out of this woman. Now, I started this broadcast with the story of a friend who was leading a prayer meeting. And she said, indeed, once, you know, just at a certain point in time in the prayer meeting, all of a sudden there was a dark presence that came in. And she said, you could feel the weight of that dark presence. And the friend of mine said, this presence was there to observe what they were praying about the church that they were praying for and standing in the gap for. And so I spoke to my friend and I said to her, what did you do about this demonic watcher? And she said, well, first of all, I waited for confirmation that this wasn't just something I was seeing. And she said, during the prayer meeting, another one of the people who were praying had WhatsApped her to say, hey, I've just noticed there's a dark presence that's come into this meeting. And so my friend who was leading the prayer meeting knew what to do. Immediately, she switched over to spiritual warfare mode. They started to pray in tongues as a group. And my friend just called forth the blood of Christ over that call, over everyone in the call. And she asked the Lord to send his angels to arrest this dark presence. She said before she had even, she was even finished with asking the Lord to send the angels. She said all of a sudden she just noticed that literally she could see a dark shape leave the call and disappear. And she said as that dark shape left, all of a sudden the atmosphere lightened up and it was very, very much lighter. This is an example of a demonic watcher. And the reason why I tell you that story today is because I'm hearing more and more people testify about the fact that they are seeing demonic watchers in their homes, in their churches. And why is that? Because these demonic watchers, they are there to collect information that they report to higher level demons in order to trip you up. And one of the key ways that these demonic watchers try and trip up people in the body of Christ is by using the words that we speak out ourselves that are not in line with the word of God. In Proverbs chapter six, verse two, it says, if you have trapped yourself by your agreement and are caught by what you said, follow my advice and save yourself. For you have placed yourself at your friend's mercy. Now swallow your pride and go and beg to have your name erased. Now, 
I need to put this verse in context. This verse is talking about those who have stood as a guarantor for someone's loan. And here, the writer of the Proverbs, King Solomon, is saying, if you've trapped yourself by the words of your agreement, and they're caught by what you said, that is what one of the things that demonic watchers are watching for. What comes out of our mouths? Is it in line with the word of God? If not, that can open a door for them to say, all right, we now have an open door in which to harass the people of God. And so praise the Lord, we can actually close any doors that we may have opened by our own words, by our own comments, by just praying and asking the Lord to forgive us for the statements we've made, the things that we have said, the things that we've committed ourselves to that were not from him. And as we pray and as we repent and ask him to cleanse us with the blood of Christ, those doors are closed. One of the good things that I want to encourage you with is the fact that God is also raising up his prophetic watchman intercessors. And as he does, he wants us to know that our words not only have power, but that our words are able to unleash war in the heavenlies against the demonic realm. And I'm going to go to Daniel chapter 10 right now. I'm going to read verses 12 through 14. Then the angel said to Daniel, do not be afraid, Daniel, since the first day you began to pray for understanding and to humble yourself before your God, your request has been heard in heaven, and I have come to answer your prayer. But for 21 days, it says, and the spirit of the prince of the kingdom of Persia blocked my way. So what's happening here? Daniel had been praying. He had been interceding. Daniel had been assigned by God as a watchman for the nation of Israel when they were in captivity. That was one of his key assignments from the Lord. And as Daniel began to pray, the angel said from the first day he began to pray that Daniel and also to pray and ask for understanding and to humble himself that this angel was dispatched. And many of us know that one of the angels that Daniel had frequent contact with was Michael, the archangel assigned to the nation of Israel. And this angel said, I have come in answer to prayer. But he said that for 21 days, he was held up by the spirit of the, the spirit prince, actually, of Persia. And so actually this angel who wasn't Michael said, finally, because of Daniel's prayers, Michael, the archangel was dispatched to help this messenger angel. And in verse 14 of Daniel chapter 10, the messenger angel says, and now I'm here to explain what will happen to your people in the future for this vision concerns a time yet to come. In this time of warfare, hallelujah, there are demons, but there are also angels that God is dispatching to work together with us and to help us to pray and to see his will accomplished. And I end this broadcast with verse 20 and 21 of Daniel chapter 10. And the angel said, do you know why I have come? Soon I must return to fight against the spirit prince of the kingdom of Persia. And after that, the spirit prince of the kingdom of Greece will come. Meanwhile, I will tell you what is written in the book of truth. No one helps me against these spirit princes except Michael, your spirit prince. And lastly, I have been standing beside Michael to support and to strengthen him since the first year of the reign of Darius the Mede. And so this is great news. Our prayers, our words, as we take our positions and stand in our role as prophetic watchmen intercessors can unleash war and victory 
in the heavenly dimensions that will then manifest itself on earth. I hope you've been encouraged by this week's Weekly Word, and I look forward to seeing you next week on this Weekly Word of Prophetic Encouragement. Thank you.